because this is the 78th episode of Seti Bimco and Woo-hoo! episode 28 of Seti Bimco Part 2 The Revenge. And this month, talking all about Spider Man, and later this hour, we're going to talk about the episode called What, George? Uh, Night of the Clones. Yes, Night of the Clones. Because it's Spider Month. Okay. Also, we answer the age-old question. Did Mary Todd Lincoln ever get revenge on those scalpers who charged her way too much money for those tickets to our American cousin at the Ford Theater? Terrible. It's Seti Bimco Part 2, The Revenge. The show where we create revenge sequels that nobody wanted. It is Seti Bimco Part 2, The Revenge. We make up revenge sequels to shows and movies, and right after we talk about Night of the Clones, Spider Man, we're going to ask a wild card question. We're asking it right now. Am I making Ooh, sense? Let me write it down. Get ready to write it down. I took it out, and we we improv. Who from this episode of Spider Man, Night of the Clones, would be most likely to number mm-hmm. eleven mm-hmm. end up drinking coffee at the local gas station with a bunch of old men all day? <laughs> These questions have nothing to do with Boggy Creek. I was about to say, this sounds like something you wrote immediately after we watched Boggy Creek. <laughs> all right, that's a that's, long one. That's all out of the way. Yeah. George had a request. I have an unusual request. Uh oh. Um, I would like, so uh, as the time we're recording this, it's immediately after the release of episode number, not sure, but it was The Night Killer, the episode mm-hmm. with uh, Kevin Cablasto, dear friend of the podcast. Hi, Kevin. Filling in for me because I don't know what I was doing. That's so So um, I did have a, a pretty strong reaction to it, and I oh took the liberty of writing a piece of fan mail. Okay. And this piece of fan mail is addressed to someone who I feel is an unsung member of the SETI BIMCO team, mm-hmm. the SETI BIMCO family, if you will. I was wondering if you could actually do me the favor of up front reading the letter I wrote. This is outrageous. It is outrageous, but you know, we're a revenge themed podcast. There needs to be transgressions with which to revenge things against. <laughs> so you want me to read this, the letters first? Okay. Yeah. Well, the letters, is there more yeah. than one? Or well, there's hate mail because we made fun of uh, the Lockhorns. <laughs> Those Lockhorn fanatics. <laughs> uh, leave Leroy but, alone. It's his right to hate his wife. But uh, <clears throat> you interviewed them, by the way. The people who do I, the Lockhorns? I interviewed John, Ru- no, John, mm, forget his, I want to say it's Reiser, Reiser, Reiner. I interviewed in high school the guy who did the art for it. Oh, I see. Here's the juicy bone moat, though. <laughs> yeah. So I'm this little fresh-faced kid. I'm all like, oh, boy, you draw it. And Bunny Host. Bunny Host is the widow of um, the man who created and drew the, the Lockhorns, died, passed it on. Yes. Bunny Host writes it. And mm-hmm. John Reiner was like, she doesn't write it. I write it. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, oh, what a scoop. And it was like, I never put it in, but I've read interviews since, and I've never seen that detail come up. But I think oh, maybe he's that one day, no, I think he seemed like he was like, at oh. the time he seemed a world worry cartoonist. He was probably only like 30, but he'd already oh. been, he probably already been drawing the Lockhorns for years. Was he married though? Was he writing from experience? Nah, I don't, hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> Good question. Uh, maybe we could use some of the SETI BIMCO funds to put me under halluc- uh, not hallucination, yeah, uh, hallucination. hypnosis, you know, hypnosis. And then they can like ask me, take a look down at Mr. Reiner's hand. <laughs> Is he wearing a wedding band? That's right. We can do that. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Special SETI BIMCO episode. Is there skin under his fingernails? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so now he's just gone to murder. <laughs> this is your producer, Miss Lee. This show is not about the Lockhorns comic strip. Can we please move it along? Let's get to your letter. Read the letter. <laughs> you want me to read this? Okay. Yeah, of course. Hi, Head Seti Bimkanats. 
Bimkanat, Tim, and replacement Seti Bimkanat. Oh, geez. Kirini Kabimo. Kabimzo? Yep. Kirini Kabimzo, yes. <laughs> Just reading what you wrote. Sorry, yep. Mr. Kevin Kabumo. This letter <laughs> is not for either of you. Instead, I direct this message to the producer, the esteemed Miss Lee. I was just listening to the intro of the most recent episode of Seti Bimco, Night Killer, and heard uh-huh. your delivery of the no doubt scripted by Tim catchphrase. This particular episode, the line was, I'll get you my pretty and your little dog, Mr. Party Pants, too. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> your delivery of the line was fine, but what elevated it to sublime was the barely audible ugh of disgust you muttered afterwards. <laughs> May I do it? To re- it was like, it's barely audible. I don't think you <laughs> caught it on there. Ms. Lee reads your line, which is actually, I should point out, you have already done the I'll get you, you're pretty, and your little dog, too. It's a different name previously. Yeah. <laughs> but this time, Miss Lee just gives a little afterwards, barely listenable. Ugh. Like, <laughs> she's just defeated and deflated, and my heart went out to her in that moment. Because she's, I mean, people, you know? this podcast you listen to, she's the woman who makes the trains run on time. She makes everything happen <laughs> behind the scenes. And she has True. to deal with these Timisms. True. So Tim sitting there writing his little <laughs> things and making her read in marathon sessions. Mm-hmm. You're a harsh taskmaster. I said, do it you, again. Do it again. Do it. You're like Stanley Kubrick, and she's like Shelley Duvall. Yes. <laughs> you you bring her to tears as you say, "No, Mister Party Pants," like that. <laughs> say it like you care about party pants. Say it like you care about that dog. <laughs> So True. yeah, I just wanted a little shout out to uh, okay. like that was that was delightful. I turned the episode off and uh, wrote to you immediately. <laughs> what? There she is. This is your producer, Miss Lee. George, thank you for acknowledging the suffering and the contributions I make to this show. <sighs> ah, that was a pretty exciting moment. I think we could all agree, Tim. Yes. And you know, in case you're wondering, I did listen to the rest of the episode with Kiernika Boomzo, and um. I also want to speak to him briefly. Okay. That uh, as as your long suffering co host, uh, we've already we've chopped up John, put him through a grinder somewhere. Like that poor guy, he couldn't. He was never the same after his ep- his stint on Seti Bimco. There's this recurring theme in Seti Bimco where I'll be excitedly spinning the moments of the episode that we were whatever movie or TV show we're reviewing Excited before we wish. get to the revenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the entire time you'll be muttering, oh, this is so long. This is going so long. And I'll try to I'll try to speed it up. And then you'll keep interrupting to be like, oh, but wait, here's a three part list I wrote about things I found on my toenails. And you were doing the same thing to Kevin. And he himself was also feeling exasperated. And I read I was like, I know what he's going through. Oh, my God. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> i know we're not oh doing God. what enrages george anymore outrages george <laughs> I but you're... i think we may have done what outrages george you're racing <laughs> <laughs> oh my blood pressure okay this is your producer miss lee this show is not about tim's narcissism now can we please move it along So, Tim, you always like to share your stories of revenge that you glean from the news. Yes. I read your first one you sent out about a person seeking revenge on ham. You like that better? Well, it kind of was, you know, it wasn't really revenge on ham. I could see that you were sweatily grasping for straws. (laughs) I was. Just now, I did not see until you just sent it, until I went to click on the link, you sent me a previous story about a guy, a boy who seeks revenge on the deer that ruined Christmas. Yes. (laughs) I did not read that story at all. <laughs> so I hope, Tim, when you tell me this story, you could paint a vivid word picture so I can feel like I can experience it. Well, there's not. The first time. <laughs> Are you up to was something? The, no. Was the dear Rudolph? <laughs> no. Was it Donder? You, you want me to tell you? It's was just it Blitzen? The only reason the story is funny. Uh-huh. Or sad. I'm betting knowing you it's sad. A yeah. deer broke into a house. Uh-huh. And there was a teen kid at home Uh and the deer destroyed their Christmas tree and he had called the police and he thought they didn't sound like they're that concerned. So he got his dad's gun, especially after it destroyed the Christmas tree and shot the deer. (laughs) That's the basic story. (laughs) That's how old, how old was this teen? Like were we like younger side of teens or older side? Well, 
if you want me to get the article, he's, there's a picture of him. He's like 16, you know, old enough to be, I don't know if that was his age, but he looked 16 or so. Hmm. He's wearing a shirt that says lifeguard. So That's and, ironic because uh, he's a lifeguard, but he took life. <laughs> he says some may uh, not agree with me, but the deer was doing a lot of damage and uh, the deer did not, you know, had not, uh, obviously had not accepted Jesus as his personal savior. I have no, <laughs> no respect for the Christmas tree. <laughs> But the deer got revenge on him in the end because the deer had ticks with Lyme disease and that, that kid got Lyme disease. So, <laughs> nice. That, I, all right. It's a true that's story. A happy, that's a happy story all around. I mean, no, it's sad <laughs> for the deer. Sad for like, the Christmas tree. If the, it, assuming, I'm assuming the boy got Lyme disease and just is dead, right? Well, no. But assuming that it had, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm assuming he died from it. Okay. Assuming that it had happened... Christmas would always be associated with the sounds of buckshot and well, not, maybe not buckshot. Let's just say a full on shotgun and blood splattering everywhere. The scrying, the screaming cries of a dying mammal all in his living room. <laughs> that kid, no good would have come from that child. Well, well I mean, I, well, okay. Okay. <laughs> have you, ever, I mean, have you ever seen you, gremlins? Oh Yeah. You remember That's there's funny. the very famous scene where Phoebe Cates is talking about why she hates Christmas because her dad got drunk and came down the chimney as Santa, yep. but he slipped and broke his neck and yep. Christmas is ruined. This kid, he's going to be like, he'll be a grown up telling his kids <laughs> about the reindeer. And he's like, and then I shot him. And they're going to be like, that's, that's, you don't understand Christmas anymore. I know every year around the Christmas tree. You know, God, this reminds me of the time. <laughs> I, I blew away Blitzen. <laughs> I was just wondering how much blood would be in the house. We shot it in the house. That's, I feel like a lot. And I yeah. feel, I mean, he was up close, so maybe he was an easy clean kill, but maybe that thing was running around. What if, Tim, what if kids at home, 16 years old, right? Mm-hmm. He's getting into that wacky tobacco. He gets the munchies. There's nothing in the house. He starts eating the tree himself. <laughs> okay. When he comes to afterward, he's like, I got to cover this up. He goes into the woods. I assume this is in Canada or somewhere. Shoots a deer, brings it in the house, throws it on the tree. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're watching the. I think it's the fourth episode of Spider Man. I, I did good sure. research. Okay. It's called Night of the Clones. Mm-hmm. It's directed by Fernando Lamas, father to Lorenzo Lamas. Um, Wait, really? Yeah. I found that fact out. Previous episode had Alan Alda's dad in it. There's a lot of famous dads in this. There is. And I just feel like I'd be remiss at not mentioning this. Tim hates when I acknowledge the fact that he and I are comic book fans. (laughs) But something that Spider-Man in the comics is somewhat infamous for is a long-running storyline that went on for literally – it started in the 70s and kind of went away and then came back in the 90s and ran for years. It was the Clone Saga where there's all these different clones of Spider-Man and it's become a thing. Spider-Man is very closely associated with clones. Mm -hmm. And so this one, I was like, this could be interesting. It was similar to the comic original comic plot. One of it was professors did this. So, yeah, I mean, this honestly is the closest thing I think we've read to an adaptation of something like this could have straight up. I, I, I'm not sure I didn't, I should have done my homework to see if that storyline had already appeared yet. It did, but yeah. this is it's okay. 75. So yeah, I feel like I feel like this might be an actual adaptation. Yeah. All right. Morgan Fairchild's in it, playing Lisa. I stunned to see her, <laughs> and surprisingly, she was not very good in this. No, no. I like she had some really bad delivery of lines. I was like, oh, I I assume that's Fernando Lamas's fault. <laughs> and Carl Swinson, he's in this. I don't know who that is. He played the doomsayer in the diner in the birds when he was old. Yeah. He played, he played Theodore Roosevelt once too. Really? Yep. You know, when Theodore and all his friends went to the Amazon, do you ever read that book? Yes, actually. You know, my, my, my little town is part of a small Valley, three towns. Mm -hmm. And one of those towns used to be a place that built canoes and boats. That's where Theodore got his big canoes to go down the river and that, that were like useless right away and got all busted. Really? Yep. Way back in uh, the 1900s. 
you know, also from that account of when Theodore Roosevelt went down the Amazon, that's why if you ever read anything about a piranha, they always say how they could skeletonize a cow in like X amount of minutes. Mm -hmm. That comes from that book. Because the people down there were like, hey, want to see something cool? And they put a cow in the water and got skeletonized. And he was like, bully. I read that book. I don't remember that part. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe take this all out. Look, folks, if you're looking to do a report on Teddy Roosevelt or Carl Svensson (laughs) or really any source of information, maybe get a second source other than Teddy Bimco. (laughs) Because chances are Tim and I are talking out of our asses. His his son name was Kermit, right? I, yes, yes, he did have a son named Kermit. I think Kermit died in uh, hey, Amazon. A, like, no, I think he died uh, in a fighter plane, like in World War Two. Mm, mm. Think so. I, it, and or maybe he was killed by Jim Henson. Yeah, <laughs> hollowed out. <laughs> to I was going to say he died puppet. because it wasn't easy being green. But all right, go with your. <laughs> ah, that's, that's better. That's better. It's not. All right, I'm moving. I'm He's moving this green. forward. Because I don't know why I don't know why we're sitting here talking about Kermit <laughs> Roosevelt instead of this Spider-Man. So Dr. I'm Moon. starting this. No, no, we're not up to Doctor Moon yet. Oh, we're yeah. starting at the at the Daily, the Daily Bugle. Bugle, and for the first time in the entirety of the series, there is more than three people there. Right. There's an entire room full of people. It's J. Jonah Jameson. It's the uh, his secretary who we refer to as not Glory Grant because <laughs> there's a character yes. in the comics who is this character, but for some reason they changed her name for this. Rita. To Rita. Lovely Rita. Something. Rita Skeeter. And then uh, there's a bunch of other random reporters, and J. Jonah Jameson is passing out assignments for people. Mm-hmm. Something we should mention in this show, instead of just being a dude who like is, you know, sometimes sells photos to uh, J. Jonah Jameson on a freelance basis. Several times in this episode, he mentions he's on salary. Like, oh. This is his full-time job. He is a newspaper man who also goes to grad school, apparently. <laughs> and has no and friends. And has no friends except for maybe Rita, who, Rita. wait, Tim, was Rita, a.k.a. not Glory, is she hitting on him? Mm. I don't think so. Is there like, are they doing like, uh, is like she in love with Peter and he doesn't realize thing. There was a couple of bits in this episode. I was like, huh? But anyway, that's neither here nor there. No. So yeah. the Tovald awards she, are happening. Yep. Tovald. T O V A D L D. No, do it. Do it right. T O V A L D. Yes. Now I know from Tim sending me text messages, you are of the belief. This is an acronym. Yeah, so no, it's to derail this right off the bat, right? Let's derail this. What derail? does Tovold stand for? Yeah, what is? What do you think Tovold stands for? <laughs> totally over various angry <laughs> lavender ducks. I really, I really couldn't think of anything. <laughs> wow, uh, I wasn't going to bring it up. Say, ah, George will think of something funny. Uh, <laughs> I'll see. Uh, Tim ovulates verily. What uh, anagrams lick. Dick, jeez, oh, how's <laughs> good one? Wow, that wow, we just got wow, just got yeah. So the Tovold Awards, which is a big science award, I I'll be honest, Tim. Had you not texted me, I would never realize those weren't a real thing. <laughs> well, they I talk just, about like, it incessantly. They do. I guess I probably would have figured out one point. I'm like this, but can't be real. So the Tovold Awards is a big science award. Peter's very excited about it, and J. Jonah Jameson is assigning various reporters to cover various people. And they all have very normal names. And there's one guy, Dr. Moon. And as soon as they say, I'm like, well, he's going to be the bad guy, clearly. <laughs> and Peter's like, Dr. Moon, doesn't he have a bad relationship with the Tovalds? And J. Jonah Jameson's like, what do you mean, Peter? And goes, well, they keep passing him up years for years. Not to talk out of school, but I hear it's because he's been involved in cloning. <laughs> I don't. So we're like, oh, I guess this is what's going to happen. <laughs> and then <laughs> Cloning is a crime in most countries, well, I guess. Well, not only... Not only that, I mean, okay, granted this TV show is from 1978. Peter has to explain to Rita, a.k.a. not Glory oh, Grant, so and weird. by extension, the audience, what cloning is. I'm like, we're, did people really not know? And if yeah. so, why call this Night of the Clones? I felt bad for Rita making her stupid like that. Yeah, like Rita has – we've never seen any evidence that Rita wouldn't know this thing. So he's like, cloning, it's when you make – and like they do this whole thing. I had to remark also, J. Jonah Jameson is straight up nice and charming throughout this entire scene. I know. Well, he's happy like, that an American could win this scientific award. 
Oh, yes, that is important. And not an American who immigrated somewhere around 1946 to help us win the space race from, from Nazi Germany. You know, and that's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you whispered that. <laughs> yes, J. Jonah Jameson is very concerned about Project Paperclip. It's a recurring theme in the show. Doesn't want some pink Okami winning. Mm. Which is weird, because that's actually the opposite of a pink Okami. What? A fascist. You, um, a Nazi fascist. Let's not get into that. Oh. You know, there's the other brown people on both sides. The brown shirts. Yeah. The brown shirts. Uh, so then, so Peter Parker... Who, in case you don't know, is actually the Amazing Spider-Man. He's anti-cloning. Anti-cloning. Because yeah. do you hear uh, the insult he he hurls on Rita? Because Rita's no. like, you mean a clone is like, I could have a baby and it'd be just exactly like me? And he goes, yes, Rita. And she goes, I don't think I'd like that. And he's like, yeah, me neither. <laughs> she goes, She goes. I don't think that's a good idea. And he's yes. like, yeah, me either. <laughs> I'm like, what? why? What's wrong with Rita? <laughs> yeah. And he makes his face He's like, yeah, because you're Rita, you're a human turd. <laughs> <laughs> it's, one read is enough, sucking up our resources, right. taking up our air. And then so drinking all our coffee. Uh, <laughs> so then we go <laughs> holiday Christmas tree. <laughs> knock, knock, shooting deer inside your house. Uh so um then we go to where the reception where um, it's a press conference, actually. It's in a hotel yep. where Dr. Moon, who's clearly going to be the bad guy because his name is Dr. Moon, <laughs> is giving a demonstration of his latest scientific marvel. We meet the character that's played by Morgan Freach, Fairchild. I yeah. never wrote down her name. You said Lisa. Lisa. It's Lisa. She is the granddaughter of one of the judges for the uh, Tovald Award. Yes. But aside from that, I can't figure out what the hell she's doing here. Well, she's except helping. for their kind of. He's he's an old man. She, Isn't she, he in a wheelchair? Maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. She's hanging out with all the scientists. I think she's. Well, uh, I'm, I'm just. I was meaning more like just for like the story, like she, like. Because they do have this tendency. There's a woman who's supposed to be like the. It seems like it's supposed to be the love interest every time. Yeah, but she doesn't give she, Peter the love, the light of day, and she doesn't give Spider Man. It's believe just a weird. Word he says doesn't believe at all. Like she's she's. <laughs> I actually thought she was going to be a clone. Oh, uh, because, I, I mean the the show is called the you know the Night of the Clones. So I'm expecting clonery to happen. There was a scene that happened that Tim must have been so excited about. Yeah, elevator, elevator action. <laughs> We had two of the judges for the Tovald Awards, though not Morgan Fairchild's grandfather, not. get into an elevator, and we see a close-up of a gloved hand, mm-hmm. and it's holding what looks like a plunger, like the sort of thing yeah. you use to blow up a bomb. And then we see Straight out of Star also, Wars. it was it, mm, yeah, it was just like Star Wars. He has a lightsaber, <laughs> and he's actually a Jawa. No, but no, uh, I, mean, like, I mean his device. <laughs> oh. No, it looks kind of like an old Nintendo thing. Uh, and we see, like, there's, like, the button that makes the elevator go up and down. Mm-hmm. And the two men get in. They're talking, blah, 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 tall vault, tall vault, tall vault. And then that finger, which we're not, I'm by the way, we're not seeing who this face is. Yeah. It pushes the plunger down. There's an explosion we see in slow motion. It's like we're watching, like, a Zack <laughs> Snyder film. We, the, control, the control blows up, and we see the numbers on the elevator shaft outside. Goes right. from seventeen to one very quickly. Yep, yep. And Mor- Morgan Fairchild didn't get on that elevator. Morgan Fairchild didn't. And important to notice, although it doesn't come to anything, we see the finger that pushes the button kind of wavering, like almost like he wouldn't have done it had Morgan Fairchild get on. Oh you, wow, you saw so much in this. You, you're, yeah, because I, I thought the, the deep. Yeah, you're going deep. I was at. I was writing all these notes thinking this was going to come to something. Spoilers, it doesn't. She has nothing to do with anything. He would have no reason to protect her or give a shit at all. I think she's, uh, unfortunately, one of those ladies looking, you know, looking to hook up with an old guy who's like got a, only a few years left. You well, think she's doing it with her grandfather? A That's lot gross. of money. Well, she's hanging out with all of them. Yeah, she might be. Sorry. I don't mean to say that. It, you did. You actually, there was no reason to say that. So you, but you definitely. But I don't know why she's hanging out with these guys. Like you said, I, I couldn't figure it out. I, I tell you why, because I think she's supposed to be a Peter Parker love interest. They just, the script never got to that. They just kind of got, unlike every other episode we've done so far, this is not a double episode. And I liked it for it. 
So what is interesting to mention is that those guys in the elevator don't die. What? And I have realized something about they, they say that they I both are recovering. That. I didn't hear. Yeah, that. it's a it's in the newspaper the next day, and they're talking about it with Morgan Fairchild. They they hammer it home twice for us. Why? Because I realized something. What? This is a show where no one dies. Well, they do at the end of this episode. Kind of. No one. If I may be well, oblique okay. and esoteric, no yeah. one fully human dies. <laughs> That is weird. Right. No one has died on this? Like, I, I don't think not. so. Yeah. It, it took me a while to realize it. Interesting. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, if you were in a, an elevator that a bomb goes off of yeah. that then plummets 17 stories, I think you'd be dead. Especially if you're, like, two old men. But Uh-oh. they're not dead. Yeah. Their wheelchair is safe. Now, nobody notices this, even though they're in a hotel where an elevator blows up and plummets. Because the, because next, the, is that the, same the press conference goes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Press conference goes off that a hitch. Did you see who was and at this the, press conference? You're talking about when Mr. Dr. Moon walks into the, the... Yeah, and he shows his great adventure. Did you see who was in the room with him? Um, some 70s actor I didn't know. No. Boom mic. Oh, that was the boom mic. <laughs> we have another sighting of the vaunted boom mic. It was there. I think it was his assistant with the uh, cloning. Man, this... <laughs> This show, it's good. Um, <clears throat> Doctor, well, Doctor um, Moon says he's, he's having a press conference. This is what confused me. That yeah. what, what he's going to do is going to make traditional cloning obsolete, and I'm like, well, what? What is he says? <laughs> traditional actually, cloning. Traditional cloning needs a donor mother. Oh, you need to implant the egg inside of some sort of mother. And he says, "I'm watch before me, and in a matter of hours." My partner, he keeps referring to his frog as a partner, which maybe is what you were setting up with Kermit before. It's just a frog, which I'm watching this like. No, George, you're paying attention to too much. You, you just, I, wa- I you liked have, this episode. That's embar- why. embarrassed me. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> well, this is a turnabout. Normally you're the one paying attention. I'm like did in you, the other room doing the dishes. But did you see the name on the container holding the frog? Uh, no. Come on. I didn't. Kermit. It did really say Kermit? Of course. I was okay, paying attention good. to those details. Nice. I mean, you, any Muppet-related detail, you'll nail. <laughs> so his partner and, is a frog. Oh, okay. He takes blood from the frog, puts it just in the cell. And because this is his new thing, it, it won't create like a identical baby. He puts it on this thing. And I guess this press conference goes for three hours because he says it's going to take three well, hours. That's the funny part of this. He says, and in just a few hours... And yeah. they just show still shots of them with their mouths open going, ooh. And they show Peter, a tadpole growing. <laughs> Close up of Peter, like just sitting there with his eye going, oh, the photograph. And it's just, it's footage of a tadpole growing. And then it just becomes a frog. And three hours later, they're all standing in the same spot. That's what yeah. I was just, Nobody left his bathroom. Nobody got hungry. Nobody fainted. So apparently, uh, they they clone it and they're like amazing. And Peter's like, you would have do that people. What did he? And Dr. Moon's like, no. Of course not. And here's where we find out that he was one of Peter's teachers a little while ago. Yes, and this is important because he recognizes Peter. He's yeah. like, you were in my, it was like uh, intro to bio class. He's like, yeah, yeah, I was. Uh, you were that yeah. kid that played Anne Frank in the production of uh, Anne Frank I, at the I, university that year. Goes, always goes to Anne Peter's Frank. Peter's like, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why would you say such a weird thing? Do you think it's funny what happened to Anne Frank, you monster? So um, <clears throat> now this part was interesting. Then we have a scene with our favorite character, Detective Barbera. Oh, yeah. Detective Hannah Barbera, who has called in the elevator inspector, yes. who clearly is a crook because <laughs> that guy, he's like, holding the controls, which were blown apart by a bomb. He's like, oh, no, it just broke. Yeah, I'm like, this guy, just broke. he's like, wait, he goes, <laughs> his name is Gavin, which I wrote down, too, because I thought it was funny. And he's like, I inspected it three days ago. But Peter has – so one of Peter Parker's well-known abilities, because Peter's there taking photos of this because it's newsworthy. One of his well-known powers, you know, he's got spider strength. He sticks to walls. Uh, he has spider sense. In mm-hmm. the comics and movies, it just it's a warning of danger. Like if someone's throwing a punch behind his head, he gets a second yeah. notice and he'll turn around. In this, it's weird. It tells yes. him any plot convenient point he needs. And it replays time again. Yep. It shows, it shows he looks at it, his eyes flash, and he sees the thing blowing up. He's like, ah. He watches the men fall to their deaths. 
sees their faces. Oh no, they don't die. So. No, they don't fall. They they're okay. And then uh, he goes back to oh, there's some stuff. So then, so they know stuff's afoot, and he's talking well, to Jay Jonah Jameson well, back at the he Daily takes Bugle. pictures, yeah. and Captain Barbera's like, "Get out of here! No pictures of the old leader." Get out of here. Get my picnic basket. Because <laughs> Hanna-Barbera, Yogi Bear, you get it, folks. So Peter goes and takes these pictures of this stuff to J. Jonah Jameson, who's mad he didn't get pictures of the gruesome stuff. And he yells, action, violence, elevator crashes. That's what sells papers. Which I'm like, again, like I imagine <laughs> Tim at home jumps out of bed. He just fist pumps. He goes, you. Yeah! Well, he says, the prog, progs are page two news. Dead people are on page one. Something like that. Yeah. Frog's well, named yeah, Kermit. Yeah. Frog named <laughs> a dead frog named Kermit. He's on page one though. That would be. That would be big news. There'd be tribute specials and everything. Many dead tadpoles. That's page six. Yeah. Uh hey, how hey. about how about frog legs? What page is that on? That's in the uh that's uh, page eleven. What about a dead Frenchman who's pejoratively referred to as a frog? What page does that end up on? Oh jeez. <laughs> that's uh uh, that's on the uh, the horoscope page. I don't know. You're losing me here. Wow. What about the my gang the my gang cast member Froggy who died in a bar fight where he bet he couldn't swallow 22 nickels and he choked on the 21st. Oh, I remember that. What page is that? In? Yeah, it's rough. A lot of people don't realize that, it was Spanky that bet him that, and Spanky that got knocked off the front page because he died uh, the same day that um, Vice President Agnew. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I thought I Wait. thought Spear Agnew was still with us. <laughs> Tim, I need okay, a break. I'm, I have to process this. All right, so okay. Uh, all right, I got nothing tonight. I, I just have to admit <laughs> that. No, yes, Andy. What happened? Uh, it's 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 because we had a, we had an imbalance. I watched this this I watched the fuck out of this episode for a change, <laughs> and you sat there trying to think of acronyms for Tovald the whole time. <laughs> So about this time, we have a scene where we discover that Dr. – well, Dr. Moon, mm-hmm. this Dr. Moon we saw, who knows Peter, who div- gave the demonstration cloning the frog, goes into his hotel room in the same building where the elevator crashed and the, everything's been happening in this one hotel. Yes. And there is a man that's asleep in his underwear on the couch. And that <laughs> man looks exactly like – Dr. Moon. Because it turns out that this cloning process, not only can it be done without a donor mother, a receptacle, not only can it bring up, instead of creating a baby, it creates a a life form the same age as the one. It apparently takes their memories. But there's a hint because he realizes that, that the other, that the other, the clone Dr. Moon who should we call him? Dr. Half Moon? Sure. Dr. Half Moon actually was the one who tried to kill the two Torvald committee guys. You can call him Dark Moon. He's like, Dark, oh, Dark Moon. That's, that's cooler. And Dr. Moon goes to Dark Moon. He's like, why would you do that? And he goes, I have all your memories and your thoughts. You must have wanted to kill him. Yeah. He's like, no, you must have only been part of me. You're like a, a Mr. Hyde. Mm-hmm. And they have an old man wrestling match. Where because he's not gonna much. knock Doctor it's not. Doctor Moon is gonna <laughs> inject Dark Moon with something. Right. But Dark Moon just takes it from him, sticks him back, and then from now on, Doctor Moon's the guy sleeping on the yep. couch, and Doctor Dark, Dark Moon's Moon. out doing he's doing all his Dark stuff. Dark Moon's like, I know where you hid your hustler. Do you notice this episode is mostly it looks like it's actually filmed in New York? Because it's at night oh, most of the time. I actually, I actually wrote that. Yeah. That this is not like because there's actually scenes you can see. This one was actually filmed in New York. Yeah. What a change. There's scenes of them running around. Yeah. Tim, I'm telling you, this was a good episode. It was the best so far. Yeah. So to move this plot along a little bit, there's going to there be costume party. Going to, there's going to be a big costume party where the Toval people will be and oh, Doctor Moon who's the, really Doctor Dark Moon the Toval the to, the Toval award seems to involve a wacky costume party i don't know why yeah it's a scientist uh, yeah. award i think they kind of rattle off a line like it's a tradition scientists don't dress up in costumes come on and in order to get there you need to have a costume j jonah jameson who is still mad at peter is like you better go and peter's like i need money to rent a costume well it's a whole drama like, it's a whole drama it's a, about it's needing a money lot. for a costume <laughs> Yeah, he ends up talking to – this is where I thought like maybe that not Glory Grant, a.k.a. Rita, was hitting on him. She's like, 
Peter, you seem to tell me you don't know any ladies that know how to sew. And she's like, I know how to sew. He's like, I do know a lady. Smash cut to Queens, where we have our second actress yeah. playing Aunt May. Now, there was something fucking outrageous in this scene, Tim. I know. There's many things. All right. He's so worried about getting a costume. He's like, yeah, there's a whole thing. And he's like, Aunt May, can you help me make a costume? Now, I will remind listeners of this podcast and watchers of Amazing Spider-Man we have previously seen this guy sew his Spider-Man costume in about an hour. Yeah. He made this thing. This guy is a gifted seamster. <laughs> I don't know if that's a word. But he has to go to Aunt May. And Aunt May is like, I wonder who I should dress you up as. Maybe Tarzan. I'm like, why would you choose Tarzan? And, she, and she's like, no, that's too revealing. I'm like, Aunt May, you dirty old I bird. Peter's and then like, the second right. one was also weird. Maybe Frankenstein, but you never could stand the sight of blood. I know. I was like, what is I'm going like, on? Who's writing for jokes? Frank, who, also, I mean, in Aunt May's world, she's like watching a double feature. She's first like, Johnny Weissmuller is Tarzan. I want to lick your abs. And then like Boris Carla Frankenstein comes on. She's like, the blood. There's no fucking blood in Frankenstein. So, yeah. She, uh, yeah, somebody is working on her lines. Yeah, so she had lived a Peter, few other ones. Peter leaves her to make the costume. We'll come back to that later. <laughs> then Peter runs no, we in. Can't come Peter back to that go- later. We have to. It's important for my story. Peter goes to the hotel to talk again oh, to you. Missed, Dr. You Moon. missed the most outrageous thing. Oh, what? Uh, she does say it now, right? Yeah, she goes. Oh, I know what to dress you up at. No, oh, she, okay. She says right. it. She says it later, okay. and I'm. I'm. You're, I was. You're I, saving. I, it. I jumped up and punched the camera. <laughs> okay, me too. <laughs> yeah, I was. I couldn't believe what happened. But <laughs> folks, let's go. You on. will. You will swallow your own tongues in apoplectic <laughs> rage when we revisit this. But we're we're going to do it as it unfolds. Okay. <laughs> um. So Peter goes back to the hotel where all the action's happening. He runs into Doctor Moon, who. Remember, is Dr. Dark Moon now. Yes. Who very tellingly does not recognize Peter. Nope. And I assume it's because it actually kind of makes sense because he was cloned off sometime before Dr. Moon recognized Peter again. So he doesn't have any memory of doesn't, the event. It's sense. it makes sense. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, oh, okay. And we and Peter gets the spider sense again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Telling him there's something wrong with him, which is really funny because it's like it's it's literally like a weird polarized shot of him with like a flashlight shining on his butt. Yes. Because there's something wrong with the doctor. And he's like, hmm. <laughs> then he runs into his love interest, Morgan Fairchild. I don't know. He, t- I don't know he tells her there. something's up about the elevator. Yeah, he's he like, knows. something's up with the guy. And she's just like, I don't believe a word you're saying. You're crazy, Peter Parker. I hate you. <laughs> uh, How come you're always around when that nasty Spike Man's around? No, she doesn't do and, that. No, she she's dumb as hell. Like she, well, character. she really doesn't. Yeah, her her character, not Morgan Fair. Morgan Fairchild is probably the most successful actor we've seen on this entire show so far. Maybe in terms of her career, she was in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, that's like that's my. She's Dot, you know, at the end, like with James um, Brolin playing oh, P.W. Herman. Forget all that. Got to watch that again. That movie's great. That movie's great. It is. Uh, so the fake Dr. Moon, Dr. Dark Moon, mm-hmm. then beckons um, Morgan Fairchild. Uh, Downstairs. To go, Without security. Because she has security all yeah, the time. Yeah, she has a security guard because of what's happening. He's like, yeah, don't go with the security. You don't need her. You don't need her. She's like, okay, I'm stupid. I'll do that. <laughs> Um, Spidey follows. Peter gets the warning mm-hmm. because the spider sense gives him plot specific stuff. He dresses up as Spidey and they go to this other address. It's actually not just downstairs. It's another building yeah. entirely. Mm-hmm. And that's when you actually have scenes of Peter Parker running in actual New York city. And I was yeah. like, Oh, cause up until now, like everything has been filmed in California. Cause he can't swing anywhere. Can't afford that. No. He just runs on top of the Well, there is there, the one time someone <laughs> tries to swing in this episode has disastrous <laughs> yes. effects. So we'll get to that later. Uh, so so did it, something's happening. Did it look like he was the, saving her from sexual assault? Because when he looks through the window, was, <laughs> he's like, I don't know what was going to happen. Is it because, her. yeah, and I guess, I don't know what was happening. Something. Peter jumps in as Spider-Man. He smashes through the window. It's actually pretty good. It was pretty good. Because Dr. Dark Moon is doing something to Morgan Fairchild. 
whatever it is, she's not picking up and then it's about to happen. Mm -hmm. He does pull out a gun immediately. So maybe he was about to shoot her. Yeah. And that's what he got. But Peter cuts his finger on the glass. Is that what happened? Oh yeah. You didn't realize? No. Cause I even watched it twice because the guy fires the gun and then Peter punches him in the face and he like recoils and holds his hand. I just thought it was. And I'm like, did he get shot in the hand or is this guy super strong now? Hmm. But something happens to Peter's hand. He grabs Morgan Fairchild. They run off down the hallway. They run down all these stairs. <laughs> Dr. Darkmoon chases them, and he stops along the way, and there's a little bit of a blood trail from Peter's wounded hand, yes. Spider-Man's wounded hand. And he gets on his finger, and he looks up and goes off, and he stops chasing them. But he somehow locks them in a vault. I was confused yeah, they there. Get, they get, you were they paying get, attention? It's like an ab- what happened? They, it's an, okay. <laughs> it's an abandoned bank. I don't think Brings. he locks them on purpose. It's an abandoned bank. They get... They lock themselves in a vault, or somehow oh. maybe Doctor Sun Moon does. So Peter it's, it's uses the stupidest Spider Man. I mean, of all the Spider Man, <laughs> yeah. he never. <sighs> but he does use his speed, his spider strength finally. Yes, and he kind of bends the vault door open and gets them out. And then he's like, he's saying to Morgan Fairchild, "Now do you believe me? He was shot a gun. He chased us down here." You got to like go to the cops. She's like, no, I don't believe no. you. All I know is you were trying to attack me. So he's just like, lady. No, I believe nothing. I, you know, <laughs> you got to want to be saved. And he just leaves her there. And the doctor takes uh, home the blood, by the way. Did we, did we make that clear? Which, yeah, the doctor takes the blood, which is, this is actually kind of clever. So the doctor, who of course is an evil clone, goes to his cloning machine, which is actually in the hotel room. He's like, now to find out who Spider-Man really is. Mm-hmm. And he puts a little bit of the blood on a, on a cell, uh, on a, a slide, and it starts growing into like a full-grown Spider-Man, as yep. we knew would happen. Well, Peter. Yes. Yeah, and I just want to mark, like, so we see like shots of embryos and zygotes and whatnot. Yeah. Then we see the two most dead-eyed children, the stand-ins <laughs> for young Peter Parker. He's fucking like, like <laughs> these kids look nothing like him. <laughs> First off, not for nothing. In the comics, Peter Parker, brown eyes, brown hair. Okay, but yes. like Nicholas Hammond, the actor who plays him, has very bright blue eyes. These dim lit <laughs> kids just had like brown eyes. I'm like oh, so whatever. But he's <laughs> he grows up, and it's suddenly it's Peter Parker there under the sheet, and he's like, ah, Spider Man is Peter Parker because yep. of course Doctor yep. Son had the run in with him. Doc, I, I'm calling him Doctor Son now instead of Doctor Darkmoon. <laughs> Doctor Darkmoon. Percent. Y'all know what I'm talking about. By the way, he this whole um, I think we just for purposes of what we'll talk about fu- in the future. The plot of this show is that Doctor Moon gets turned down for the Toe Vault Toe Vault Award so much, and it's like he's very upset about this. Okay, yeah, he's been. Pa- we should have mentioned that more clearly up front. He's been passed. Maybe we should put this up front. Passed over so he- many times. He's been passed over five times in a row, and apparently this guy's such a genius. Mm-hmm. He's the only person who should have gotten it. And you know what, George? What? I have the three. Oh, you have a list. <laughs> the three. <laughs> we had some steam going ahead. It's time to throw that list and derail it. <laughs> Let's hear him. What are the three other inventions, Tim? The three straws that broke the camel's back. Why? Can't wait. The real reason why he doesn't get the toe vault award. Mm-hmm. Back in 1973, at the Tovalt uh-huh. costume party, he and his oh. then girlfriend Anna were both walking around the party dressed as clowns, and he was continually shouting at her, "I said clone costumes, not clown costumes." So they, you know, they thought he was a jerk. That's quite. That's quite awkward. <laughs> that's embarrassing. No wonder. All right. And at the 1975 Tovalt party, uh-huh. he and his then teen assistant Tommy had a stand at the costume party where they were selling socks with the word pet sewed on them. And he was shouting at his... What? They were selling socks with the word pet sewed on them. Pet. Okay. And he was shouting at his assistant, I said pet rocks would be the great idea, not pet socks. Oh. You loving these? So the last one, the last reason for the 1976 toe vault ceremony, he wised up. Uh He bought his own tickets to Australia where it was going to be held. He made all uh-huh. his own arrangements. But once he was at the airport, the announcer over the loudspeaker said, would passenger Moon go to gate E58? But Dr. Moon thought they said, all passengers at noon go debate at 5 of 8. So he went to the airport debating room and he missed his flight. 
you go. Why did you skip 1974? Uh, I don't know. You know, I don't know what happened there. <clears throat> oh, that was that's lost to the mists of time. I think that was a different girlfriend, and uh, she bought tickets. It, it was I mean, yeah, it was in it, Austria. She bought tickets to Australia, and she okay. got oh, she got that's good. she got stung by a uh, scorpion and died. And he was like, "Oh, that's sad." Did she get a worm in her brain, a living worm, like that happened to that woman in Canberra? No, scorpions are not. No, okay, yeah, that's pretty bad. All right. Now, where were we before that happened? <laughs> we see Nicholas Hammond grow up, uh, Dr. Dark Moon, as a clone of Peter. Yep. And Peter, and Dark Peter, hates Peter's clothes just like the rest of us. <laughs> <Did you notice? laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and also, uh, yeah, so Peter, the, the Peter clone, let's call him Ben Riley. He, uh, no one knows that's what a comic. That's a comic. No, they do. He was he was in Spider Verse in the comics. Ben Riley is the clone. Was the clone of Spider Man? Uh, he's named after Uncle Ben and uh, Aunt May's maiden name of Riley. In case you're wondering, gotcha. Uh, but he's evil, and he just, he's speak. It's kind of cool. He speaks like you know, he's. A, it's like Nicholas Ham being a bad boy. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, "This is Peter's pad. What a mess." Well, before that, my favorite thing is he's getting dressed, yeah. grumbling about Peter's. He's like, can we do this over breakfast? Yeah. That's what Parker would say. <laughs> Guys, always hungry. I'm like, what a weird detail. <laughs> so um, I, they're actually, I don't know if Ben Riley, a.k.a. the clone of Peter Parker, I don't think he has powers. Oh, he does. Come on. He fights Spider-Man at the end. Kind of. I'll get to that. I think he has. Uh, so um, we finally get our confirmation. We've been wondering this throughout the series. Does Peter Parker, in fact, live with Aunt May? And the answer is no. Not in this one. Aunt May has her own house in uh, Queens. Queens. He visited. He has an apartment that is a dump. Because Dark yep. Peter's like, this it, is it, a it dump. It's fine. Dark Pe- yeah, Ben Riley is like, this place is a dump. He's only got two, epi- but, two, two copies of Playboy. What did we... I, uh, if I was the dominant person, I'd be 17 copies of <laughs> Hustler. And he knows because he has Peter's memories, Ooh, yeah. he knows exactly where the hidden chamber where Peter hides his costume. Yep. But weirdly, so apparently Peter has two Spider-Man costumes, we Weird, learned, weirdly. which makes sense. Uh, he has extra set of web shooters. But. Apparently only one utility belt because something you should know about this show is uh, Spider-Man actually wears his utility belt over his costume. <laughs> so he's got like kind of like a Batman utility belt sort of thing. Totally. But weirdly, the clone didn't know that. Well, the, he's like, well, the clone says no util- he doesn't he, have an extra one. No, he's the clone goes, there's only one no oh, utility yeah. boat belt, though. And Dr. Dark Moon goes, maybe he doesn't have an extra. Yeah. Why doesn't he know that? <laughs> yeah, I know. Why doesn't he know and that? It, I guess that's so we could tell them apart later, though. Frankly, I forgot to look for that. I know. It's... Um, so Ben Riley steals the Spider-Man costume and the web shooters. Now we go to – we cut to Queens. That's where Peter was when this was happening. He's picking up his costume from his beloved Aunt May, mm-hmm. and she has made him – as pretty impressive Errol Flynn Buccaneer costume. He's like, <laughs> wow, did you make all this yourself? She goes, well, some of it. The boots were from the attic. They belong to your Uncle Max. I know. <laughs> and that's why I'm like, what? what? <laughs> like, what? in this fucking show. So Why? Go back and listen. We talk about, like, there is the episode. Two episodes ago we do it. The opening episode <laughs> of this series they do Peter's origin, and and Tim mm. and I were both kind of like it was pretty good, but a very oddly, the most key part of Spider-Man's origin is the Uncle Ben death, yeah. and the with great power comes great responsibility, and that's not in no, it. Like, there's nice. really no reason between why there's no reason given why like Spider-Man is Spider-Man. Like, he gets the powers, but he just decides to be altruistic. He doesn't have the the growth of the character in the comics. Yeah. Where at first he's like, I use my money to get. Get power and money. Well, I use my power to get money. Yes, and then yes. he's yeah. doing that. He lets a guy go and Uncle Ben gets shot. But it's Uncle Max. I know. <laughs> Peter doesn't say much about Uncle Max because like, he was the uncle that lived in the basement when he was very young. And he, he, he made I, fly fishing lures all the time while dressed as Elf. <laughs> when, when Peter went down there to get folding chairs for Thanksgiving, he would see that Uncle Max had left a manifesto open. And it was all about 
Oh, his plans to be Errol Flynn lookalike in Times Square. Either that, or like a cowboy that played his guitar in his underwear. Oh, you're, you're aiming too low, Tim. Back then, Errol Flynn was probably still alive. He's like, I'm going to be the new Errol Flynn. Yeah. I'm going to take over his life. That's right. I, yeah, I'll be in like Flynn was the last line he wrote. And they never <laughs> saw Uncle Max again. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So he takes uh, he takes this costume. And I'm still like, at this point, <laughs> I, I can't believe it. I'm like, really? It's hard to pay attention like, after that. That's like, it was. It's like doing a Batman show. Instead of Alfred the butler, it's like... Uh, <laughs> Toval the butler you know it's just it's it's weird it's very weird like it was everybody knows that so um uh <clears throat> then peter's trying on the costume and he immediately blows out the ass rips it open <laughs> and that man is like isn't that just like you peter <laughs> <laughs> always blowing out your ass well she's out there and he's very he's like aunt may what did you do to me Jeez. and then he's like I know where I could get a costume, which I'm like, I can't believe it in the first place. You know what I thought originally? I was like, this show is so cheap sometimes. I bet you Aunt May knitted up a Spider-Man costume. It'll be just like his costume. I, I thought that's what they were going to do. And I was surprised. <laughs> like, oh, I guess he's going to be a, a, a buccaneer. But no. So, of course, Peter now, because he, he just tears the ass out of this thing. <laughs> Peter goes to the costume ball dressed up as Spider-Man. Because really? he is Spider-Man. <laughs> which... <laughs> Which when he, when like, he gets his costume, he doesn't notice that his extra one's missing either. That's why I was. That's thinking. funny. Yeah. Also, did you notice this? He shows up. He's in his full Spider-Man costume at this party. His head's covered. He's got his actual gear on. Immediately, <laughs> Reed is like, "Hey, Peter," yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't react. It's not like because I mean, like I'm like, "Oh, your costume needs work, buddy." Yes. Like you just blew your secret identity. And I've often thought that, like. Spider-Man does a better job of concealing his identity than most superheroes, honestly. <laughs> like, you know, like, huh. you know, I mean, Superman, that dude just doesn't do anything. He puts on a pair of glasses. Give me a break. Um, Batman, most characters, they have half their face out. Yeah. Spider-Man covers every inch. Yeah. Like, you don't know what he's like. Nope. But you still, just through body language and stuff, like, you kind of know him. And, like, he, this is clearly the point. But, you know, the funny, I do want to mention, because I think it is amusing, he doesn't it, it actually show any surprise she recognizes him either. <laughs> Which you, that should be that should be such a huge red flag because he dude. immediately talks to American Morgan Fairchild, uh huh, and he talks to her like, "Now, do you believe me? You remember what happened when we got stuck in the safe?" And she goes, "Oh, it's you, Spider Man." I'm like, "What? You're telling one person here you're Peter. <laughs> you're telling another person you're Spider Man." Yeah, <laughs> like, and I don't think I feel like Reed is potentially with an earshot when it happens. Oh. And then we see there is actually there's and then there's like another Spider-Man at the party who's got a bit of a gut. Right. And I guess that's funny. We're like, aha, fat Spider-Man. Fatty Spider-Man. But then there's he's going to blow out his pants any day now. Anytime. <laughs> How does his pants even fit on there? <laughs> and then we see there's three Spider-Mans and Spider-Man, yes. our Spider-Man, Peter Parker goes to when he's and he says something like, no, the, the clone. Ben Riley comes up to him and says something like. I don't know. What does he say? Do you remember what he said? Have says? you ever in real life seen someone pull out their pants? So I don't know what I would do. <laughs> I would collapse on the ground laughing. Uh, I don't think it's ever happened to me in real life. Oh, man. I get, Tim, I want to make that happen for you. <laughs> I'm going to, like, what day would you least expect that I'm going to plant somebody in the yard? Like, we'll, like, be hanging out, like, at a like a bar somewhere or like at my house and I'll have like an actor just go like, let me just pick up this nickel and oh, <laughs> blow out his pants. Did we mention right, this so, was a different Matt May from the first episode? Different, different, different one, actress I, played Matt May, by the way. Oh, I did. Yeah. I mentioned. Because they, they don't I, explain why she looks so different. No. Nope. But George, I got three yeah. possible reasons why she looks oh, so no. different. <laughs> Let's oh, slow this podcast oh, okay. down. Let's Thank bring it up. to a crawl. We're at the climax. We could have <laughs> just finished this, but no, let's. All right. What are the three reasons? Aunt May. <laughs> well, in the, in the old one, she looked much older. The first one. This one, uh-huh. she looks younger. Okay. So in this, right. this new episode, you can see she kicked the angel dust habit she had in the pilot. Oh, yeah. Back okay. then, it was angel That explains dust. why she kept. That's why she kept running up and down the stairs repeatedly. She had too much energy. <laughs> and in the this new episode, uh-huh. She was actually a puppet designed and operated by Paul Fusco. Paul he, Fusco. He's the creator of Elf, the puppet Elf. Oh, wow. I love that you mentioned Someone that like anyone laughing. would know that. Yeah, no. <laughs> John is. If Paul John Fusco, knew. if you're listening. Okay. <laughs> John's not listening anymore. 
In the pilot, she'd been drinking a bottle of heroin cough suppressant from 1913 that Uncle Max gave her. So that's why. <gasps> Fuck Uncle Max. <laughs> he was a party guy. That was good. <laughs> when they came to a party, okay. when they came to Aunt May's house and Uncle Max lived there, the party goers just counted down the minutes till Uncle Max blew his pants out. Doing some sort of dance. Like, like, oh, that's how they celebrate the new year. Everybody's like, they did a countdown. Five, four, three. And he's like, whoa, and his pants rip out. <laughs> All right. So let's back to the show. Back to the show. Uh, Peter, Ben Riley, who is the clone Spider Man, mm-hmm. pulls out a gun. This is why I think he doesn't have powers. Uh, yeah, that's what's and, weird. And he pulls the gun on Spider Man. So instead of them having like a cool Spider Man fight, there's like Spider Man gets the drop on him, punches him a couple times. Wait, the belt do, falls off. Yeah, well, so they, we're do, not they do. They do put their masks on, and they have a fight on the roof. So yeah, they they, they fight. They, they fight, but it's like a couple punches. But he has the gun on him. Peter gets the gun away from him. There is a tussle. Peter's belt falls off. So I guess we're not supposed to know who's who. Yeah, yeah. Which um, and then the uh, dark Spidey. One of the Spider Men. Okay. We assume Dark Spider Man. He <laughs> fires his rope to the neighboring building, so figured, takes yeah. it, attaches it, like which is something we never see Spider Man do. And then he goes to swing across a zip line. He does like a zip line. <laughs> do like a zip line, although it was it was up. So yeah. How was he zip lining uh, like against gravity? And the rope, the pole he attaches it to snaps, yes. and he swings into the wall and explodes. <laughs> I think it was a light there, right? <laughs> Something it's, it's electrical. It's like a transformer. He vaporizes. But he is atomized. <laughs> and it happened so quickly. I had to get up and t- I'm like, what? Wait, what? Did he just atomize? Yes. Not a trace. Spider-Man's <laughs> spare costume and web shooters are also incinerated completely. Typical Peter. There's not. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then Peter goes to Dr. Dark Moon. Mm-hmm. Who at this point is like, I made it. He, he's suddenly in pain. Yes. He's like, oh no, it's happening. I'm aging suddenly. And it's like the effect at the end of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, where when Walter Donovan drinks from the wrong grail and ages super fast, yeah. but done very poorly. That's- so he just ages and he's like, oh, tell them I'm sorry. And he dies. Just like Indiana Jones. Just like that. Just like that. Didn't he say I'm yep. sorry in Indiana Jones? No, he just goes, oh, 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 and he screams while he's holding Ilsa Schneider, and then he turns into a skull. Inside. And then the knight goes, he chose poorly. <laughs> Mic drop. Great movie. <laughs> Not like this. And then doc, the bad oh. Dr. Moon's kind of like, oh, I was wrong to try to kill them. I realize that now I'm aging. I'm tell, tell the real Dr. Moon I'm sorry. And then we don't get any real resolution. It's like Peter's like, there's reports. Like The only person who knows this happened is Spider-Man, who yeah. can't testify in a court of law. Because he's a secret entity. In comics Instead, and in well, TV shows, if you find out a secret identity of a superhero, chances are you're just going to die accidentally. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> Once a character knows that you're dying or something. Um, and then we go back to the party and we discover, instead of resolving anything else, we discover <laughs> that fat Spider-Man <laughs> Jonah was J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> and Peter takes a picture and he's just like, ah. <laughs> he doesn't even hide his face. He's like, that's literally. Yeah, he pulls his mask back and he goes, "Hey, smile, chief." Click, and he goes, "R Parker," and that's the end. <laughs> this is as bad as that time you took a picture of me in my adult diaper. So what's going to happen? Like thirty well, seconds after he, he did like, wake oh, up. Oh, by the way, hmm. there's an incredible aged corpse of a dead man that looks. <laughs> Genetically identical to Dr. Moon. We should probably explain that. Luckily, nobody was killed in the elevator thing before. <laughs> yeah. Man. It was the best episode, but they it did was. so little with the clone. I mean, the clone could have talked to J. Joe and Jameson. And, and the clone literally never uses his powers. And Jameson would have been like, and, hey, I like you, Peter. What's, what's up with you? He, he would have liked Dr. Peter. They could have done that. They yeah. could have been pale. Like, how bowling. do they not make this? Bo- oh, yeah, what else? Well, J.J. and Dark Peter would go bowling. That's all. They drink some Budweiser. Oh, wow. Play ping. But, I mean, really, from pinball. like a, a standpoint, he knows Peter Parker's identity, and he has a clone of Peter Parker. It's debatable whether or not he has powers. Mm-hmm. He could have really fucked over Spider-Man's life. Yeah. Instead, Peter Parker's clone is completely just in, <laughs> not even incinerated. There's not even ash. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was fun. That was fun. You yeah. should do revenge. Wherever you are, wherever you're hiding, I'll find you. I'll get you. I'll get you. Revenge. I'll get you. Revenge. 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 One of us will die. One of us will die. I will die. not, share, I will not let Cindy die. take I'll my place. I will have my revenge. revenge. Should we do first? First, we should do our wild card, which, if I recall, I was most likely to end up drinking coffee at the local gas station with old men all day. Talking about the Lockhorns. Ta- uh, or what, what's your favorite Muppet? Uh, it- my favorite Muppet is Gonzo. Mm. Yeah. I don't think I have a favorite Muppet. Yeah, I probably don't either. Oh. What the hell was that? Was that your toilet? Cars. Oh, okay. So, Wait, uh, I was going to ask your favorite something, George. Okay, what? What is your favorite? What is your favorite Beatle? Who? Uh, are we talking Beatles like the band yes, or Beatles band. like Rhino or Stag Beetle? Hmm. I'm going to say George Harrison. Oh, me too. That's funny. So many, yeah. so many people I think say he's that. most people's. I think he's most people's favorite. Damn it. Yeah. Who's your. Well, because, you know, you would say John Lennon for a while, but John Lennon, he's a lot. You don't want to say Paul because Paul's, I mean, not to be rude, Paul's overstayed his welcome. He's like 900 years old and still around. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and like, we're all going to be really sad when Paul dies, like yes. me especially. But but like George, he that guy special. went too soon. He seemed to have a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. He funded Monty Python yeah. and stuff. Yeah. He seemed to have the coolest attitude about things. Just kind of laid back. He's like, yeah, I'm one of the most famous people in the world. And uh, <laughs> yeah, he was the underdog. Mm-hmm. He was overshadowed by Lennon McCartney. And he wasn't Ringo, most importantly. So yeah, it's really? George. See, this is what old men would sit around at the coffee table talking about. Oh, my God. We just were the old men. <laughs> Do you remember that comic strip? Carter's, Carter's Crew? Was it Carter's oh, Crew? No. I, don't, I don't know if you're talking real comic strip. <laughs> Millie's Place? So who is, Millie's Place. You know who's joining us? Ta- Morgan Fairchild. Oh. Because she, Morgan Fairchild's <laughs> character, as you opine, Twain. she's... No, not Mark Twain. <laughs> Mark Twain's not welcome here. <laughs> Morgan, you're like, why is she hanging around these old guys? She must be trying to find a rich old man. That's not, I didn't like, mean to insinuate that. I know, no, I know. But for the sake of this comedy bit, she sees the two of us sitting around talking about her favorite Beatles. She's like, that's some classic old man shit. Mm-hmm. And she kind of sidles up to us and joins in a little bit until she realizes we're a cartoon. And she's like, no, thank you. And she leaves. Realizes what? That we're cartoonists. We're not rich old oh, men about to kick off. Right. We're just weirdos right. who draw little pictures of like True. superheroes all day or whatever. <laughs> and so she takes our coffee and fucking skips out of town. She slams. She and throws so the coffee against the wall and walks out. <gasps> oh my god! Does the shards of coffee does it kill the third person who was yes. with us who we didn't mention until now? Who was that third person? Uh, <laughs> the old man. The old man. Who was the old man? Who was the old man? I we- I can say it's Morgan Freeman. <laughs> okay. Because yeah, of Morgan, Morgan Fairchild. Because of Morgan, Morgan Fairchild. Freeman. Morgan Freeman, Morgan Fairchild. Is that our it? Is that it? We just did I it guess. and I didn't realize it? We did it. We did it. Uh, I was we worried because we've stumbled the last few weeks. But you're saying Morgan <laughs> Fairchild. She's the one that hang out at a coffee shop. Good one. Yep, at a gas station. Yep. Yep. Okay. Right. Revenge. What's happened with revenge? <laughs> All right. I have my revenge character. Do we both do the same one like always? I don't know. Go, you go first because I don't want you to change right. it. <clears throat> okay, so my character is actually a character who uh, did not appear in this. Spider Man, mm-hmm. as you all know, is a character that is very famous. Well, he's a very famous character, first off. But I hope. Is the music playing? Yes, it is. I hear it. <laughs> but Spider Man in recent years has become especially famous because of his multi dimensional counterparts. Okay. Uh, there has been the very popular movie Across the Spider Verse, and I mm, Into the Spider Verse is the first one. And I think it's Across the Spider Verse. Muppet Spider Man. And we see these we see these Spider Mans from different worlds. There's like Spider Ham, who's like a pig, and there's Hobie Brown, Spider Punk. He's just cool. Mm-hmm. And there's Miles Morales, who's like the Brooklyn Spider Man, and there's other Spider People. And one of the things we know is that it's pretty common. Like, so, well, it's not common, but sometimes these Spider Man cross over. This time, it wasn't a Spider-Man that crossed over. There was a flash of light. The universe shuddered, Mm -hmm. right? And it's like done with the most awesome 70s special effects you could see. The streets of New York temporarily morph into the streets of New York. It's a different New York. And out steps a figure silhouetted from behind. He's kind of rotund. He's got a little pot belly, some gray hair. It's Uncle fucking Ben. Oh, finally. Yeah, and he's like, oh, here I am. 
The last thing he remembers is he was sitting in his car waiting to pick up Peter from like some gig. Mm -hmm. And like this burglar came up to him and was like, give me your money, old man, and get your car. And just when he thought he was about to die, a portal opens up and he finds himself in this strange new world. Ooh. And he's walking through the streets. He recognizes he's in Queens, but it's like a really fancy Queens. There's like a fucking mansion up ahead. And he recognizes it's the house he shares with his beloved wife, Mae Parker. Nice. And he goes inside. And I should also mention he traveled through time. Okay. This is not 1978, is which is the when the series is set. Turns out this is, let's say, this is 1970. The Beatles have just broken up. The Beatles have just broken up. There's people, there's people crying, crying yes. in the streets. Yeah, they're crying in the streets. This guy's smashing the album. It's just like, I'll never <laughs> listen to music again. <laughs> and Uncle Ben walks into the house and he sees his aunt, his beloved May. She's played by a different actress this time because that's kind of you know par for the course for this a show. Totally another one, not even the ones we've seen. Totally different. No, just a new actress. Like let's say B. it's Arthur. played by Morgan Morgan Fairchild. No, B. Arthur's better. <laughs> so he's like, May, it's me, Ben. And then he looks beyond May, and what does he see? Max. He sees fucking Uncle Max. <laughs> Uncle Max is lounging there. He's only what the only thing he's wearing is his buccaneer boots. And he's blown his pants out already. So what, his blo- <laughs> Tim ben knows what's he didn't just blow his pants out. He blew his pants off. He's completely naked. Oh my god. He's got the boots on, he's got a buccaneer hat, he's got a little sash around his waist, and he's tucked a rapier into it. And he and May are engaged in some flagrante delecto. <laughs> some role playing. Some role playing. And Ben takes his revenge. You know what he does? Uh oh. Well. He goes into the kitchen, he takes a pot of water, puts it on to boil pours in he, put, he puts about like maybe two cups of water he puts yeah. in about two and a half cups of rice they let him do this well they're they're tra- they're scrambling to get dressed oh, they don't okay. know what's happening yeah he burns that fucking rice he burns all their rice and unfortunately it was chimichanga night and they really needed that rice to cut into the chorizo it was really spicy and they're like, well, I guess we don't have rice. After that weirdo came in here and cooked all our rice. Okay. So at this point, they're dressed again, right? Okay. Okay. So it's Uncle Max, it's Aunt May, and it's young dead-eyed Peter Parker who just came <laughs> to live with them after his parents died. And they're eating the chimichangas, and Max has a fucking heart attack because it's too spicy. What? Yeah. Because there's no rice to cut it. The chimichanga just burns him. Uncle Max. Like, they heard burn! Uncle Max. Yes, yes. Okay. Ben takes his revenge on Max for not being Ben in this world. Mm. Yep. Well, what what did Max do wrong? He wasn't Ben. (laughs) Okay. Look, toxic masculinity expresses itself in many (laughs) ways, shape, and forms. And I know Uncle Ben is generally held up to be a sainted figure, (laughs) but you go back in time, (laughs) you go to your house, you find your wife played by a different (laughs) actor with a different guy entirely, who is probably, let's say he was played by the actor who plays Uncle Leon from Seinfeld. That's going to make you go a little crazy. Uncle, And plus, Uncle Max, he worked at a pharmacy and he got Peter a job there and when Peter would deliver medicine to the wrong people he'd slap his ear Peter goes box their ears slap my ear Uncle Max so then his mission accomplished because he was a pouch, he was crouched on the building across the street where I guess I don't know the Watsons lived yeah he sees that that Uncle Max has died Uncle Ben from another universe he grabs the rope next to him goes to swing to safety but the front line snaps he hits a wall and explodes <laughs> And the lesson Listen. is revenge, revenge. If you're going to commit revenge, you better dig two graves or at least be prepared to explode into a shower of sparks if you swing away from the scene of the that's crime. Quite a, that's quite a metaphor. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> and, I thought it was uh, going to yeah, end. It was going to be Uncle Ben's burnt rice. God, I thought you were going to... The burnt rice already happened, Tim. They burned the well, rice that and they the didn't have any for it? their chimichangas. Spider-Man 2, Uncle Ben's burnt Ooh. rice. Oh, Tim, rewind this. When he explodes into sparks, he's just rice. It's just rice, okay. It was just rice, burnt <laughs> rice. And that Aunt May, who's, you know, she's kind of upset because Uncle Max just died. She steps up, she goes, she's like, Peter, do you smell burnt rice? And Peter doesn't smell anything because he's upstairs with his playboy, <laughs> the same one that killed Uncle Ben previously in another episode. Done. Start my music. So Dr. Moon... Ooh. 
But the real Dr. Moon, he's still got in trouble for making clones. Yeah, I mean, he did try to so, murder some people, even though the elevator operator didn't find any evidence. No, the, re- yeah, the, no, the real Dr. Moon, he didn't try to murder. He just made clones. But Yeah. So he was sent to prison for four years because he cloned humans without a permit. And he got out of prison okay. in January of 1981. Well, this probably means something. Oh, wait. What? That's right after John Lennon died. Yeah. You thought this episode would be about Kermit. Then you thought it'd be about... <laughs> Beatles, I don't know. So, Dr. Moon, he immediately goes underground. And he starts cloning himself again because he wants to create another evil self that will help him get revenge on the Tobalt Award Committee for never honoring his accomplishments. All right. So thus, he clones himself. But this new clone is truly evil in a way Dr. Moon did not foresee. This clone wants to work in advertising. <gasps> he was very talented. Oh, that's wretched. Yep. And he got a job at Twin Cities Advertising, one of the top firms of 1981. His big account? Well, this clone, Mr. Moon, he loved the way porta potties looked all the like, kind of like clones. So he took on the job of coming up with names and logos for all the different porta potty companies. Oh, no, this is just a list. You can do all the, the he, potty party jokes. He's one, the one who came up with such gems as Call Ahead, Rent Ahead, You're in Need, Koopa Trooper, Honey Trap. A lot of load, Lucky Lou, Bum a Bog, Stink a Stall, A Movable Beast, Sit and Go, Shove a Dove, Boombox, Sneak a Stool, The End is Here, Wait, Catch a Falling Star, Sneak a Stool, <laughs> two, two Girls, One Log, <laughs> Rain in the Summertime, Shaken, Not Turd. <laughs> <laughs> PCP and the PCP? classic. Oh, and the classic. I thought they smelled bad on the outside. On the outside. <laughs> <laughs> so no Boggy Creek though, huh? <laughs> no. So that 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 clone was a bust. He just went into advertising, but Doctor Moon was not deterred. Uh, the clone. Of- Wait, was that a pun? <laughs> nope. Deterred? <laughs> no. <laughs> no more poop jokes. But the end of that. He cloned himself again, hoping to get an evil clone. But this clone was obsessed with writing movie scripts. This clone did a, started working on a movie script idea he had that involved a, an archaeologist in a race against time to find a Noah's Ark before the Nazis found it. But on June 12th of uh. 1981, this clone saw that a movie came out called Raiders of the Lost Ark. He never saw it uh, from the description. He figured, yeah, that was his idea. They, they ripped it off totally. So he dropped out of society. He started working on a movie about a teddy bear called Mogwai that didn't like to get wet. Or if it got wet, Uh-oh. it would clone itself many times and knock over people's Christmas trees. He, th- he thought he would try one more time. Third time's the charm. <clears throat> he created another clone. That's third <laughs> time's the charm. Did I say that? I did. Yes, you did. Like three times. So that's third <laughs> time's the charm. But this third one was evil in another different way. He wanted to form a religion and be a cult leader. And so that's what he did. People would gather in the green church he built, and they would look at the holy red balloon, and they would pray to the cow that jumped over Prophet Moon. And they would chant, See that cow jumping over Prophet Moon? See the three little clone bears sitting on chairs? And the two clone kitties and the pair of mittens? I mean, kittens and the pair of mittens? And a little are house doing, and a young clone mouse. Are you doing Good Night Moon? A, You're doing Good Night Moon! And a comb brush full of DNA and a bowl of We're hay. We're going to get sued by Margot Wise Brown. And an old virgin lady who whispered okay. Good night, Prophet Moon. Good night, Prophet Moon. Good night, Prophet Moon jumping over the moon. <laughs> Good night, little red light. Good night, red holy balloon. Oh, you messed me up. Good night, light. And the red holy balloon. <laughs> Good night, bears. Good night, chairs. <laughs> good night, kittens. Good night, mittens. I can't read much more without getting sued. Can I? I man, I think you already are sued. Up and good night, old virgin lady born in May, and good night, prophet Moon, who summons our Lord very soon. Oh, I miss that all. Was the old? <laughs> yeah, was the old? Was the old lady Aunt May? Yeah. And the strangest nice. part is that Doctor Moon, the original, he got caught up in the cult of his very own clone. That, that was the end of him. They, they moved to Waco, te- Texas, and, you know, we don't know what happened to them. Mm. The movie's called Triclones. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. This, 
Oh. We're sorry, everybody. Oh. Whew, we really brought it home. What was that? Yep. You thought I was going to pay about Kermit? Yeah, you uh, you were very cunning. You laid the trap that I thought you were going to be obsessed with frogs. Like you're 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 wising up. And you thought I was going to do Kermit then. But of course, I was still I had to avenge the insanity of Uncle Max. We're sorry, everybody. Are we? <laughs> they know what they're coming for. Spider-Man's getting me. Getting to me. I just realized something, Tim. While you were reading the entirety of Good Night Moon, the beloved children's classic, mm-hmm. Uh, I realized we skipped an episode of the TV show. Well, it doesn't matter. So whatever you want to pick. All right. Why? What did we skip? I, you can still pick it. It doesn't matter. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to. So, What's happening so next folks, week, folks? It'll be much better next week. This was the best episode we've ever done, Tim. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> next week. So we, we've already done the pilot movie length pilot episode of Spider-Man. We did The Deadly Dust, parts one and two, episodes one and two of the ongoing series. We skipped ahead to episode four, Night of the Clones, the episode you just listened to. We're going to go back <laughs> to the episode three, The Curse of Rava. Okay. Yeah, it sounds, like, it sounds like it's going to – I feel like the potential for casual 70s racism Uh-oh. is very high in this one. Is this one where someone has psychic powers? Uh, a telekinetic. Okay. But I, I think we're done. Because it's, we talked, oh, man. It's a long one. Kapumo made me talk for an hour 25 about that night killer. Whew. Yeah, I, and two- I, I, w- I was on such a, um, a journey with that one with you all where I'm like, I think I want to watch this. And then like a second later, I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to watch this. And then I'm like, maybe I will. It was so weird. It was like... <laughs> It's a funny movie. And then, then because you actually did a really cool drawing for it. I was like, I think I want to see this. <laughs> then I actually saw a photo of the mask. I'm like, I don't think I want to see this. <laughs> wow. Looks real bad. <laughs> I can't wait because in two weeks it's going to be October. And it's just going to be scary Halloween movies. All octopus. And I, no, we, we couldn't. Do, there's not no, enough. No, octo- we're not, doing, no, not enough of them. No. Not enough octo movies. Like, scary my movies, movies are already everybody. picked out. I can't wait. I know them. Ooh. All I right. Mine are not, but I'll find some good werewolf related fare. You like stop motion? You like it, eh. right? I like stop motion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Email us. G mail. Email us. <laughs> Gmail. What a Seti great Bimco with an e Seti Bimco with an E at the end at gmail.com. Hey, go to write to us about how much you enjoy the vocal stylings of our producer, Ms. Lee. Help us improve our podcast. Um, yeah, give us give us reviews, give us ratings, <laughs> give us money. Go listen to my other podcast, Hypothetical Island. Give us reviews. What would you, give us. Money. What would you do if someone split their pants in front of you? You know what happened is we, we're number three in performing arts on Good Pods, and I'm like, I can't take the pressure. I can't take. The you pressure. snapped. You snapped. I snapped. So follow us on Instagram. Give us reviews. Uh, there's my brag. Yep. Buy my books. Good. Work that Buy George's in. books. Yep. Give us money. That's it. Money. All right. And uh, see you all next week for what might be the conclusion of Spider Week. We're not actually sure because is. is there four months in this, four weeks in this month? <laughs> no. Nope. I'm done. Actually I'm fucking... done with Spider Man. <laughs> no, I we still have like to do. It, but... It's the whole month. I know. It's the whole... Next week is the end. All right, George. I'll see you next week. All right. Let me try to see stop you next week, Tim. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. This has been a Pity Party Line production. Party Line. It's a party line. And, oh, you're right. Cast station. And then a guy would come in and he'd say, we're hunting monsters. Morgan Fairchild would be like, I don't believe a thing you're saying. There's no monsters. I don't, I don't know <laughs> I'll come with you anyway. Because these guys are losers. They're talking about the Beatles. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, Beatles fans. Why? All right. Who's not a Beatles fan? Somebody. Michael Stipe. Really? Is that true? Yeah. I remember. Yeah, I remember reading. He called them. Uh, he said the Beatles are overrated and a joke band. Hmm. I'm like, well, you are the man who wrote um, <laughs> "Shiny Happy People," <laughs> so you're entitled to say that about the most famous band that ever existed. <laughs> I like REM. What do I say? I like them too. Uh, I like them. I saw yeah. them. Uh, I think I did too. Fables of the times. Reconstruction Tour. 
Oh, dropping some. Stuff. And you know what? There was an old man there when we went with his was like young daughters, station? and he's like, "Yeah, I was uh, here and saw the Who." Ugh. And he had to bring his daughters to see like this. He's like, "I'm old. I saw the Who." And did his daughter say who? He goes, exactly. <laughs> they know who. He's like, no, that's what I'm saying. They said who? And it was like a who's on first thing. And his grandfather was there. And he said, I saw the band. Who's on first? Like, What's on second? Yeah. We, you know, we had such a clean out. <laughs> right. You just dragged us back in. Let's cut. Edit here. <laughs>